My name is Ethne Miller Simpson, President of the Women Entrepreneurs Network of the Caribbean. The Women Entrepreneurs Network of the Caribbean was actually established coming out of a conversation with Hillary Clinton while she was visiting the Caribbean at the time when she was the Secretary of State. And we discussed, along with about 23 women from 10 different countries, we discussed some of the issues affecting women in business and women generally. And as a result of that conversation, we decided that, you know, we wanted to come together in the shape of an organization to address some of those issues that we discussed. So with the formation of WENC, which we call WENC, we have been focusing on women's issues in particular in the work environment, in the workplace. And uh, I believe it would have been maybe about five years ago, five to six years ago, had a conversation now about what we needed to change and how that change would come about. And uh, Alison Anderson McLean, who was in charge of UN Women in the Caribbean, reached out to me and said, Ethne, we see the work that Wensi is doing. How about if you know we partner a little bit more closely? And in having that conversation, being invited to quite a few of their seminars and their, their webinars, we realized that there was a coming together of the issues, not just for Jamaica, but across the region. And UN Women at the time was implementing the win-win campaign in the region, in six countries across the region, and Jamaica was chosen. So with that entire movement, as I'd like to say, um, we recognized that the adoption of the WIPs was one part of the work with UN Women. Um, other components included just ensuring that, you know, there was more of an awareness and sharing information across Jamaica and the different countries. And those countries included, for example, Argentina, Chile, uh, Brazil, Uruguay as well. Coming out of the, there was a particular conference that happened in Brazil. And coming out of that UN Women conference across the region, we then realized the importance you know, of having the conversation about the WIPs and what exactly are these women empowerment principles? How do we you know, share the information about the WEPs, what they stand for, how it will help to change lives, and not just individual lives, but also organizations. So when C made a decision, the board got together and made a decision to become a signatory. And in becoming a signatory to the WEPs, we have sort of become brand ambassadors, which I know Alison would have been very happy about and she, she meant a lot to us she really meant a lot to us in the organization so the sharing of the information about the webs being a brand ambassador helping other companies to understand the importance of it and how the adoption of the principles will change lives of not just women who work in those organizations but also men closing the gender gap and talking about gender parity looking at the disparity between what men are paid versus women in Jamaica. It's, it's the most impactful because I think culturally we never thought there was a problem. That's number one. And culturally again, and you know, socially how we are socialized. Um, we, we think that women's work, there's a question sign around that. So a lot of women will actually take part in what we call the care economy and we don't realize that there's even a care economy. We take care of the elderly, like your parents who are older, you take care of your children as well. And that is unpaid work. That is unpaid work. Because very often we only think of work as what you do when you visit a business place where you exchange your, your labor for wages and you get a salary at the end of the month. But there is, there's quite a bit more to, to unpack when you start looking at how people are paid, male versus female, the parity or disparity there. Um, also to where women take part in this care economy. And COVID has seen where more women are involved in that care economy and yet they're unemployed, formally. You know, so in terms of the greatest impact in Jamaica, that has been one of the most impactful um, changes that we've seen and also companies recognizing that this is an issue and that conversation has been a tough one because many organizations never thought that there was a problem um, they just thought that they just hired people and they just employed persons and 
you know, everybody was okay. They were not okay because some women were not being paid equitably for the same job being done by a male. And we've seen where there has been a right sizing of that. It's not quite where we want it to be, but at least the awareness now is very significant and quite a few um, business owners and CEOs are realizing that this is something that does need to, 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 to be looked at. Um, we're still just about at for every dollar, if I'm not mistaken, in Jamaica, we're about at 64, 64 cents to the dollar, male versus female. And I know in other countries internationally, they're at 72 cents, you know, for every dollar that a man um, earns, a woman owns, um, earns 72 cents of that. But it does signify to us that there has been progress and we are pleased with that progress. All of this work is unpaid work for most of us. Um, those of us who are whether just volunteers or we are on the board, this is all volunteer work or volunteer, um, voluntary service because we were seized with the importance of this issue. We recognize that the lives of women can be greater enhanced and men as well because gender equity is good for men as well it's not just for women and we've seen where the the whole gender conversation has evolved to there was a point when you know men were not really included and we thought it was just about women we are recognizing you no know, you cannot develop women without developing men alongside and boys and girls should be dealt with you know equally um so in terms of where when you think we will achieve gender parity? Wow. Before COVID, I would have been a little bit more optimistic. COVID has set us back. And I think no, the data is indicating that in another 135 years. So really, not in my lifetime. And what we're saying is that that's not okay. And that's not enough. So let's take, for example, the webs. In Jamaica, we now have, I think we have 47 companies that are now signatories. And we're happy with that because we started at zero. And through the efforts of, you know, UN Women, we've got to this point, and WNC and other agencies, we've got to this point. What we do recognize, though, for us to go faster is, as the African proverb says, if you want to go far, you go by yourself. If you, no, if you want to go fast, you go by yourself. But if you want to go far, um, you, you know, you go with others. Um, we want to speed things up a little bit. So getting the companies together and saying, okay, let's now go through with a fine tooth comb as to what policies really do need to change within, let's say, your labor policy within a company, your employment and recruitment policy. That's where the conversation is at this point in time. And I think if we get the companies that have already signed to move that forward a bit more, and also, you know, across the region is getting our governments as well to adopt gender responsive policies that would help to move us faster, not just in Jamaica, but across the region. Okay, so how to really put this across? Gender equity is good business. Win-win is win-win campaign and the push for gender parity is good business. There's a clear business case that we've seen implemented elsewhere in the world that we would want to implement here in Jamaica so or across the region. So um, the business case really is about looking um, for business persons, looking at your revenue currently, and then saying to yourself, how would I grow my revenue? One of the quick and easy ways is to look to see how many women you're selling to. Because women are, we are really the ones who purchase a lot for our businesses and for our homes. We're the chief purchasing officers, if you want to call us that. And as a business person as well, I would say to any business, look at your product lines. Look to see if your products are, you know, relevant to women. We've seen where the, the auto industry, for example, made a shift in the last recession and put in products and features on their vehicles that spoke to women because... Case in point, you have a woman walking out of a supermarket, a baby in one hand and a bag of groceries in the other. So having those sensor, um, you know, sensor areas on your vehicle that you can just wave a hand or, you know, pass the key, the keyless entry and those sorts of things, help women to get into their cars faster. We deal with issues of safety as well. When a woman is walking out of, a, of an apartment building late, you know, in the evening 
and she doesn't take that long to get into her vehicle it's likely that those products now will have a greater appeal to women so if you look at your bottom line gender in my opinion gender is good for anybody's bottom line and that is the that is the key feature or push or sales um, sales push I would make for anybody who is thinking about gender um, not only in business but when you think of government as well it is useful for us to take a long hard look at this moment this opportune moment in COVID and look to see how we can genderize many of our policies as government because you would actually be striking at the heart of our economy the heart of our society and even the heart of your political system so it is something that we should really pay some attention to